Okay. And if Gabriel is in the 29th percentile for glucose, what is his glucose level? Okay. So this is definitely where you're going to jump in with Desmos. So remember, as far as yesterday went, well, there's two things that we're going to do on the same thing. So I'm going to do normal distribution first with 84, comma, 8. Okay. So that's what that looks like. But then we want to know that the 29th percentile. 29th percentile is like saying 29%. Okay, so... 29th percentile is definitely to the left. So remember, you're going to do a period. As soon as you do a period, your graph goes away. It doesn't mean you broke something. And then you have to go to back to functions and find the inverse CDF. And so I'm not going to plug 29 in. I'm going to plug in what? 29, very good. So if I do that, that basically means that this person's glucose level is 79.6. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. <clears throat> so that 79.6 is our actual score. That's what our level comes out. If the diagnosis of prediabetes is often given for any fasting blood glucose level between 125, what percent fall within that region? So if I want to go back, I'm going to get rid of the inverse CDF and the period, go back to this, and this is going to say I want to uh, know between 100 and 125. So if I convert that into a percent, you're talking about 2.3% of the population is uh, prediabetes, you know, after fasting. Does that make sense? And then approximately 4% of glucose measurements produce results that are symptoms of hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. What glucose level is the cutoff for the lowest 4%? Okay, so it's asking for a percent again. So what do we have to do? Period and inverse norm. Inverse norm or inverse CDF. And 4%, so I'm not going to plug 4% in. What would I plug in? 0.04. Yeehaw. So we're talking about roughly... Um, a 70 or 69.99 so or 70 of blood sugar level doctor tells a patient only 17 percent of patients have a higher glucose level than yours what is the patient's glucose level Ooh, only 17 percent at okay only 17 percent okay so let's think about this when I do the area underneath the curve, it's always to the left. So we want to go to the right. So I'm going to do the complement of 17%. So I'm going to go 100% minus 17%. 100 minus 17 is 83. Okay. So I'm going to change this to 0.83. So that means that... So a doctor tells you only 17% of patients have a higher blood glucose than yours. Okay, if they said lower, you would have the put in the 0.17. But we wanted to go to the right, and that's why we're doing the 0.83. So that means your glucose level is at 91.6. And then recall that IQR is the 25th percentile subtracted from the 75th percentile. What is the IQR for this? Okay, so I'm going to figure out, I'm going to go 0 0.25, which is 
that's the 25th percentile. And then I'm going to change the 0.25 to 0.75. And 89.4. So then I'm just going to go 89.4 minus 78.6. So your, your IQR with this would be roughly 10.8. And then what is the z-score of the 95th percentile? 95th percentile is 95%. 95% is 0.95. So if you're in the 95th percentile, so that's pretty far to the right of the standard deviation, you're at 97.16 is your, uh, that's your B is 97.6. And then what is the z-score of the 95th percentile? All right, so z-score, so for 7a, remember z-score is observed minus the mean over the standard deviation. So 95th percentile Let's see, where's the, there, there, there. So that's an area. So that's 95th percentile. This should be 0.95. And then if you want, you can say, <clears throat> so I'm going to go observed minus 1 over, oh, no, 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 minus 0 over 1. No, I'm wrong. I did something wrong. Oh, shoot, stirrup. What did I do wrong? Oh, wait. Oh, okay. So I'm going to take my 97.16. So 97.16, I'm going to plug it in. So I'm going to go z-score equals 97.16 minus my mean, which is 84 over 8. And if I do that math, that should work out nicely. Ninety-seven point one six. I'll put this in parentheses so it does order of operations. Minus eighty-four divided by eight. So one point six four five is your z-score. So putting it in that. So basically, that question is backwards. Like you should have found B first and then worked backwards. And then it says a factory produce a factory machine that fills cereal boxes with breakfast cereal. Yeah, buddy. Uh, it's supposed to pour 11.1 11 .1, or 11.5 ounces of cereal into each box, but the machine produces a standard deviation of 0.3 ounces. Assume that the weight of the cereal in the box is normally distributed. The company considers rejecting any box that pours more than 12 ounces. What is the percent they will need to reject? Okay. So I'm going to use this top equation, keeping all this here. So normal distribution, they said 11.5 is the mean comma, the standard deviation is 0.3. And they say anything that pours more than 12 ounces. I think this will work. Nope, undefined. What did I do wrong? Uh, oh, I know what I did. Stirrup's dumb. All right, so it says anything that is more than 12 ounces. So infinity. So it looks like we're going to reject about 
4.8% of our boxes means they go back. The company considers rejecting 5% of all boxes that have the most cereal in them. What is the cutoff in ounces? Okay, so rejecting 5%. So now we're going to go to dot inverse norm or inverse CDF. CDF of 5%, so 0.05. So you're looking at, oh wait, I went the wrong way. Uh, the company considers rejecting 5% of boxes that have the most cereal. Okay, so the 5% having the most cereal, that means you're going to the right. So it shouldn't be uh, 0.05, it should be 0.95 because 100 minus 5 is 0.95. So 11.99. Um, any boxes that weigh 11.99 or more of this cereal gets rejected. The company considers rejecting all boxes that are at least three standard deviations from the mean in either direction. What percent will be rejected? Okay, so if we're going three standard deviations. That means one, two, three, so this way. One, two, three, this way. Okay, so if you remember, this is 0.15%, and this is 0.15%. Add those together, so you get 0.30%. So this is a pretty small, pretty small amount that you're rejecting. Describe the values in ounces that will be rejected. Okay, describe the ounces that would be rejected. Oh, okay. We can do that. Three standard deviations. All right, so so you're gonna have the so if I go point oh or point one five, that's um. Wait, 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 0.5 percent. Oh, wait, point oh no, oh oh one five. All right. So the reason I plugged in point oh oh one five because the tail is already point one five percent. Point one five percent as a true decimal is point oh oh one five. So you're going to reject anything that's less than ten point six ounces, and then at the opposite end is 0.15 so that means that there is 99 99.85 so 0.9985 and anything that is more than 12.4 ounces gets rejected and then i feel good about the rest you all right all right so we don't have swim times? Okay, let's make something up. All right. We're going to we're going to It's on you which, which event are we going to talk about? Uh, 100 freestyle. 100 freestyle. Okay. So this is a real life swimming question. 100 freestyle. All right. So first thing we're going to do um I, I don't know what a good time would be on a 100 freestyle. Um, 59. A 59, 59 seconds? Okay. Uh, so let's take it out to a decimal. So 59.0. And I'm just going to make up other data. Okay. It's kind of surrounding this. So I got 59.3. Do that. And then let's go with the other way. Uh, 58 .6, 58 .9, 58.6, 58.9, 58.3, 58.1, 58.0. That should be enough pieces of data. Okay, so let's say that we know that swim times for a swimmer happen to form a normal distribution. Are you following me in this? Okay, and let's just pretend 
these were all of the scores that were provided from the past pieces. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We had twelve swim meets in there. Okay. So let's say these are your times for the past twelve swim meets. You with me so far? Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to be getting into we're getting into the next big swim meet. And you are going to swim against somebody who you know has good times. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the mean of x1. And I'm going to find, based on our data, standard deviation of x1. Okay? So this says... By our data that was made up, but let's say it's real. Let's say we have a, a, a mean of 59.27. And we have a standard deviation of 0.944. Okay. So we can do this. So on the next thing I'm going to go do is I'm going to do a find my... normal distribution and we found that we have a 59.27 comma and a standard deviation of 0.944 okay so this is your normal distribution graph based on the data that you have provide or that we make made up but also provided so that make sense okay let's say that you are going to you know that you're you're going up against the number one in the state you with me so far yeah and the number one person in the state swims a 57 9 that's their best okay. uh, is that possible yeah okay so 57 9 is the most possible okay so this is not to take away from, that's obviously a target you want to try and get to. So let's figure out what, what, it, what percent of people would fight, go between, where did I say that the number was going with? Thank you. 57 point nine. Okay, so based on your data, if that was truly your swim data, because we collected data on you, this means you have a 7.3% chance of making that time or better. So there is a shot, right? That's I mean, so that right there is like a sports real statistic. Do y'all know what sport was the first to capture statistics? It's actually baseball. And the Oakland A's were the very first team uh, to use statistics and for their a lot of stuff. They figured out how they had data on all their players, how they played in certain temperatures versus a indoor versus outdoor stadium. How did they hit? How did they hit with humidity levels? They had all of this data. And the coach of the Oakland A's was a statistician and realized batting order was important based in these types of things. So you might have, you know, the batting order, you might have this person bat fourth sometimes but when it's higher humidity, the person who normally boat, uh, bats fourth, when it's low humidity, he goes to a high humidity environment, that person's actually going to bat seventh because the data is there. But, I mean, if you look at that information, that, that is a real-life thing. So is a 7% chance a likely thing of happening to a swimmer, to an athlete? Yeah. Okay, 
now this basically this is based on the made up information but if those truly were your swim times that's what it's based on so i think this is kind of a cool thing to look at um now let's go with let's go with another idea so let's say let's say a swim time of 61 is needed to qualify for the next round okay or the next the next race that will come up the following week a 61 okay 61 seconds you're swimming at so 61 seconds if that's truly the thing that means you basically with your data your current swimming data idea you have a 96.7% chance of qualifying for the next round. Okay. Friends, are you following me? Finn, do you play hockey? Yeah. Okay. So let's let's make let's turn this into a hockey scenario. Okay? What 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 how many shots on goal would say your team have in a typical game would you think 45 okay okay 45 okay that doesn't mean you you made 45 goals you just that goalie was busy yeah. that's what you're saying yes yeah. all right so let's just kind of go through and and just say 45 45 47 47, 43, 40, 40, 43, 42, 55. That was like a, no defense on that game. 46, 47, 49. Okay. So we have some data we've plugged in. We want to see what this data is going to do when you're thinking about situations playing hockey. All right, so that means that with that scenario given, that we have a mean of 45.3, meaning you're doing 45.3 shots on a goal on average, and your standard deviation is 4.03, meaning 68% of your shots will be plus or minus 4.03 away from 45. Make sense so far? Yeah. All right, so with that known, let's change that are make our normal distribution your stuff so i got 45.31 comma uh 4.03 okay and i'm going to hit plus i'm going to hit our plus so we can that's your basically your normal distribution so let's say let's say you have kind of a cruddy game and there's only 31 31 goals or 31 shots on goal so what's the probability that you shoot a 30 th only 31 you know times the goalie of the team that you're playing against has to grab that puck you're talking about 0.019 percent of the time okay now now, I know as teenagers and as just people, we never exaggerate. So let's say you get home and you're re you have that one really excited kid who ate way too much chocolate and drank, you know, four energy drinks on the way home. And like parents weren't able to make the game and parents say, hey, how did you do? Oh, it was awesome. We played so well. We did 123 shots on goal. And the parents are like, wait a minute. You did 123 shots on goal. Actually, I gotta go the other way. 123. Infinity. So dad the statistician says, really? 123 shots on goal. I've been tracking your data, and the probability that you did 123 shots on goal as a team during that game is 
4.1 times 10 to the negative 81st power percent. So what does dad call on son or child? Bull. Bull. You're exaggerating. No, no, dad. I'm serious. No, I think you're exaggerating. Okay? I mean, there's this is where we are now at this class. Now, we've taken uh, swimming and hockey, both of the things. Jacob. Um, you are a wide receiver. Is this correct? Okay. Um, Jacob, how many, what was your best amount of yards on a catch? Approximately. It doesn't have to be exact. 43. Okay. So that was your best. Okay. So let's say, and you've been playing football for at least three months. <laughs> So you have you been a wide receiver pretty much the entire time you've played football? Okay. So we're going to kind of play with this. Now, do you think 43 was kind of a high amount? Like during a, no, a normal game, what would be a typical amount that you might get? 15? Okay. So we're going to kind of – so we're gonna, we have kind of an outlier, which is okay. So 15, 15.5, 16, 18, 9, 0. Three, four, five, seven, nineteen, twenty-two, twenty-eight, uh, seven, one, one, three, three, five, four, six, four, three. Let's just pretend those are your personal stats. You with me so far? Okay, we got some good data. I mean, obviously, you got some good catches in there, and Catch is a catch is a catch, right? So, based on our data that we made up, um, you have a an average of 10.3 yards per catch. Now, that original big 45 in there is might be pulling it to the right, okay? But we're going to say it's normally distributed. Uh, your standard deviation is 10 point. Holy cow. Your mean is 10.3. Your standard deviation is 10.5. Um, what's that? 10.3, comma, 10.5. Okay, Jacob. With the data known, with the data known, this is your normal distribution. You want to know that you are going to catch, you're going to have four to 60 yards in the game. If you're going to have any of your catches, we're, so with our made up data, if it was truly true, that would, as a statistician, as a sports statistician, you might look at it saying, you know, you're at a 72.6% chance that you're going to have at least one of your catches will go from 4 to 60 yards. That's real stats. That's real. I mean, yes, we made up the data, but that's kind of cool. Okay? So, friends, I just showed you, I just showed you three different types of things. But this can be related to lots of things. I, I didn't just pick, you know, three different sports because I'm trying to play favorites. I'm just trying to show you how sports statistics works. And it goes exactly with this. And I think I think this is kind of a cool thing to think about when you're playing. Okay? Jacob, are there certain plays that you might play if it's like – Third and three, do you have a specific type of play that you might play versus if it was a third and six? Yes. Now, Coach probably has probably about eight or nine different plays for each type of scenario, but he's looking down at that sheet and he's realizing if it's a third and six, which play would we run? Which one of these three plays would we run because we know we the patterns of it versus the third and three? 
and it, it's different different things. I don't think the Broncos understand that necessarily because they suck this year. But there's definitely things that you know when you have people that are looking going, okay, we are in a third and six third and six situation, but we're on our own three yard line. That might be a consideration of let's just try and get ourselves out of danger. You know, just who knows. But I hope our small little glimpse into some sports statistics was worth it. We could also have done it with cross-country running, track, dance, okay, based on scores, okay. There's a lot of different things that it can be done to be looked at. And that's where I think this class is really starting to, you're starting to grab onto, you know, how you should do. Okay? So, friends, I didn't have any homework planned for the weekend. Thank God. Is anyone, am I going to get any parent emails? No. Any hate fans, hate mail? No. Oh, I got to take attendance. I didn't take attendance. Or did I? Oh, it, it looks like Laura's not here, and Chance is not here, and what's she showing me? 173, 181, 185, a whole bunch. All right. I love it. Thank you. I love it. Thank you. And is that today? Who am I? Oh, it's you. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Jake, was that worth looking at, that kind of thing? Finn, was that okay on the shots on goal? Sorry, the, the parents had to be a statistician called Paul on the kid who's exaggerating. I had to bake a cake for my second period class, and I left it in my car. Okay. Is your car on campus? Yeah, it's okay. right over there. No, my next what? class all the way is in these. Okay, yeah, go we'll take care of it. Thank
Peace out, friends. Have a great weekend. I hope uh, some of you get to go to the game. If you do. <laughs> Take care of each other. Boom, boom. Oh, we had a better trend going. You guys got lagged on me. a boy. Oh, that was a good one. Good one. Good one. I like it. Good see you guys.
Hey, Wiggins. You all good? You good? You got a test? You good? Look at another one. Look at another one. Look at another one. That's the one we're looking for. I knew it. How many of the baby come? Right here. Right there? Well, he's right there. Well, we'll just do this. It'll make it easy. I'm just 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 I'm just
some homework that maybe what's up easy oh son that was the one we had some homework yes186, you still with me on this adventure? So if you're showing me uh, anything different, let me know what you're showing me, okay? Get it? How are you, sir? Was that your water bottle? Okay, cool. I saved it for you. I have So we we still missing a couple of kids, but uh, we're gonna have some fun. I, he actually picked a good one to come to. Yeah, I was like, hey, just reach out. He checks because I certainly don't want to go in there doing a quiz. Yeah, thirty fifth today. So I, like, just, I like to get people a chance to. Yeah, that works. Works for me. Yeah. Oh, that's why my door is always propped open. <laughs> you guys are always welcome. Anyone's welcome to come. <laughs> yeah, we're missing quite a few. <laughs> Oh, it's not here. Oh, it's normally here. She's in the restroom. Yes. Yeah, buddy. You what? All right. Show my friends. Let's run through the homework. We're gonna get, we'll get most of the way done, and then I kind of have, I kind of have a fun activity that is gonna be very, very, very much related to sports. We're gonna look at three to four different sports. We're gonna talk about some sports statistics and some real life applications of it. Cool. So hopefully you like it. All right. Let's take a look at homework. We got. Oh, I need I need this connected. 
All right, first problem. It says sketch all three positions. This has to do with uh, blood, blood, blood glucose levels. You have an average of 84, standard deviation of 8. Draw the normal distribution. All right, 84 is middle. Standard deviation is 8. Add 8, subtract 8. 84 minus 8, 76. Good. Add 8 to 92, 100, subtract 8, 76 minus 8, 68. And one last one, 108 to 60. Okay. That's pretty simple to do. Would you be able to do that on a quiz? Does everyone understand how I got all those positions? Yeah, cool. All right, so then we're going to get into, and it talks about uh, this person, Gabriel, is at the 29th percentile for glucose. What is the glucose level? Okay. So we're going to jump onto our friend Desmos, see if we can handle this. I gotta clear all this out. All right, ready? So help me out on Desmos. Go to functions. Where do I go? I'm trying to find the area under the curve. Normal distribution. Thank you, Mr. Knox. This is the first year I have used. Desmos as a, as a tool, and it, it's been pretty successful. So they told us 84 was the mean, 8 was this. And how do I how do I see my graph once it's not there? Plus, good. So hit the plus button, and here's our normal distribution. Agree? And whatever's on that board is also on this board. <laughs> All right. So the new thing that we learned... We're talking about the 29th percentile, which is 29%, which is 0.29. Agree? So remember, the first thing you have to do is you hit period, and the graph goes away now because you broke it. And then we have to do inverse CDF. And I'm not going to plug 29% in. I'm going to plug in 0.29. So what this means is... If this person, Gabriel, is at the 29th percentile for the glu glucose levels, that means that his glucose level is a 79.6. Okay, not doesn't have to be percent. It's just that's what his actual level was. Okay. And then the diagnosis of prediabetes is given, and it happens to be between 100 and 125. So I no longer need my inverse norm. So this goes down to number three. So I'm going to get rid of this, brings me back to the normal curve. I'm going to bring up my limits to it. And they tell us that normal level is between 100 and 125. So lower level is going to be 100, 125. So my friends, we are looking at the pre-diabetes is between 100 and 125. So what percent of people would have that? If you take a look, that's 0.0227, which is roughly 2.27% of people have prediabetes. I think that might be wrong because I think we are in a what much worse environment. Um, not you all, I just so, society. So follow the trends that you're doing now because you guys are great. All right, then it says number four, approximately. 4% of glucose measurements produce results that are symptoms of low blood sugar. Uh, what glucose level is a cutoff for the lowest 4%? So think about this. 4% have a really low blood sugar level. So I want to find my area under the curve. So dot inverse norm or inverse CDF. Now, this is where it becomes hard. So if you take that and you plug it in, oh, that, that actually we did it right. So it, what the graph goes away, this is talking about somebody with a 4% measurements 
we're talking about 60, almost 70% would have, uh, if you had a, uh, or not 70%, if you had a, a blood sugar level of 70, that means that you are 70 or lower, okay? Those would be to the left. But we're going to do one that goes to the right. So as the doctor tells patient, only 17% of patients have a higher blood sugar level than you. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this for a sec. I'm going to go back to my graph. Okay. And I'm going to change this to, I just, I want the whole thing shaded for a reason. All right. So think about this. They say 17% of patients have a higher blood sugar level than you. Think about this. 17%. 17% could be over here, could be over here. But I want 17% that have a higher blood sugar. So am I looking at the area to the right of the graph or to the left? 17% have higher. Okay, higher we're going to the right. Okay, so they, this is a tough one. A lot of people will make the error with this. If you if you plugged in inverse CDF and you plugged in 0.17 for 17%, it says 17% of people have a blood sugar higher than you. Okay, so think about this. This is tough to think about. This is our, our blood sugar level, 76.4. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I just want to, this is important for you to see, because remember I said I wanted the area to the right. Okay, so the normal blood sugar is 84 with a standard deviation of 8. So meaning if I subtract 8 from 84, I get 76. Hey, Lynn, one standard deviation is 68% of the population, but this says, 17% of the people have a higher blood sugar than us. This doesn't make sense. So I need to change that 17% to 100% minus 17%, which is 83. So that means people with blood sugar levels of 91.6 or higher are the people who have a higher blood sugar level than you. Does that make sense? Okay. And then we're good with that. What time we good on time? All right. Um, if you didn't get the rest of it done, that's okay. Um, show it to me next time and we can go over it a little bit on Monday. I want to have some fun. We're going to Lawson, you have me some data? Yeah. How much data do you have for me? Ten. Ten? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So, Lawson, what are what swim event are we going to swim? Uh, 50 free. The 50 freestyle. Don't worry. I'm going to bring some football into this. So I'll, I'll, catch, I'll catch as many people as I can. And I'm bringing in hockey for you. Wearing the hockey shirt. <laughs> All right. What, would you, is it okay to share your data with me? Go ahead. Okay. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 23.8. 
25 yards. Okay, so okay. So freestyle is the fast the the, the one that you can sprint in. You can't really sprint in the others. Okay. So Lawson says, hey, stir up. These are my scores, and they're normally distributed. So now we know they're normally distributed just because she told us so. All right. Ready? So I'm going to find the mean of x sub 1. Okay. And then I'm going to find the standard deviation of x sub 1. All right. So, Lawson, with your normally distributed information, you will average swim in a 23.01, okay? And your standard deviation is 0.63 of a second, plus or minus that. So 68% of the time you're going to swim um, 23.01 plus or minus 0.63 seconds, okay? Okay, this is real sports statistics, okay? This is how it works. All right. So, um, Lawson, I imagine those times are relatively good times, being that you're going to swim in college. Is this appropriate? Where are you going? Okay. All right. So, so, Lawson, let's take a look at what your normal distribution looks like. So normal dist and it, our mean is 23.012. Let, let's take this out to three decimal places and our standard deviation is 0.634. So in order, oops, I didn't mean to have that. So in order for us to see your normal distribution, my friend, this is what your normal distribution looks. I wish it was blue because blue and water, it's, uh, you, you're swimming in green water, they don't have good chlorine. All right, so now Lawson. Lawson, you are in a particular swim meet, and you know that to get into that championship or the, the, the state league or state time, there is a certain time that you have to hit. Now, now if I understand this correctly with swimming, let's say you have eight lanes in normal pools, right? Okay. But you could have 32 sw people swimming the same event, right? So the, the worst times swim first, and then it goes to the best times would swim last, right? So you'd have four different heats. Is, am I saying this right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's say in order for you to know that you are in that top eight spot, you need to swim a 22.9. Okay. So 22.9. So an or less. So 22.9 or less. Loss and I, I'd like to say that you have a 43% chance of swimming that. Yeah, if you wanted to swim a 22.9 or less, or less, you have a 43% chance of that happening. But that's a chance. So hang on. So now listen. So listen. Now Lawson's feeling, feeling a little fickle. So as you're talking to an athlete, what does an athlete know how to do? You know how to push yourself. You know how to compete. You know how to, okay, I got a four, my stat shows this. I'm going to have a 43% chance that I'm going to do this. Dude, I am going to, in your case, swim your heart out to get that number. Okay? Now. That's a real stat. That's real. That's not imaginary. Now, I, I, of course, I made up the 22.9, but that could be something that could be very valid for you. Okay? So this isn't, don't look at this as going, oh, no. This is where you as the athlete, you're digging down deeper going, I got this. Okay? I'm not going to take, I'm going to go the entire 25 down, no breath. Are you going to do the whole thing, no breath? 
check in on the opposite side, come back, fill breath, get to the other side, you're seeing stars going, wow, this is fun. But hey, that's pretty cool. But this is a real sports statistic. All right. Mr. Boyd, you are a running back. Is this correct? Am I using the correct terminology? Okay. So, I, what is, what do you think your longest run as a running back would have been in your whole life of being a running back? No, I know. You can guesstimate it. It doesn't have to be exactly right. 87 yards? Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Now, now, I would like to think that's always normal for you to do 87 yards, but that was like, that was one of those where you made it through going, I'm still going. Yeah. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm still going. I'm still, this is fantastic. Did you get a touchdown on that one? Yeah. Giddy up. I like it. All right. All right. All right. So, ready? You said 89? 87? Okay. Now, so we're going away from swimming. We're going to football. Um, what, how many yards do you, so 87 is kind of an anomaly, yes? Like that was like, holy cow, that was the best day ever? Okay. So I'm going to just make up some data. I apologize if it's not exact data for you. But, but keeping, did you, did you run, were you running back all four years? Here, okay, so, okay, so I'm gonna put in some of your runs. You got 2.3 yards here, you got 4.7 here, you got five here, six here, three. I'm just making up data as we go along, and we're actually gonna keep Lawson's information in there as well because it's gonna make it more fun. Okay, 19.6, uh, 22.3. Okay, we also have all the swim data in there. We're just gonna act like that's all the same. Is that okay? All right. Ready, Mr. Boyd? Because we got kind of a big game coming up, yes? All right. And I want to go one more. 20 or go to. Boom. All right. Are we in there? Hey, hey, watch your language there, son. You're embarrassing me. Next one. Hang on, we need a one. All right, there we go. I just want to make sure I was changing. And all right. So with the data, and yes, we have Lawson's data in there as well. Are you still with me? So, so Mr. Boyd, congratulations. With the information we have that I didn't realize it was made up, but it looks like you are averaging 17.5 yards per carry. Yeah, baby. <laughs> with, now here's the kicker, you have a standard deviation of 19.8. So that means, that means you're 68% of the time that you carry the ball, you're going to go 17.5 plus or minus 9.8 yards. 19.8 yards. So there are some that you might have lost some yards on according to our data. Oh, someone got through the line. Someone didn't do their job up front for you. Sorry about that. Okay? All right. So we're going in. We're gonna change. We're gonna change. And we're gonna look at your normal distribution now. 17.469. Standard deviation of 19.19.8. Hit my plus. I'm going to go to negative or infinity here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is this? Put that in there, put that in there. My normal distribution is getting goofy. There it is. Mr. Boyd, that is your normal distribution. Okay? Yeah. All right. So now, now, let me, let me ask, because y'all can probably tell me this. Are there certain plays 
that coach is going to call when it is, say, a third and six, and you are on your own 20? Is there a certain certain handful of plays that coach is going to kind of stick with in that situation? Okay. Now, what about if it's a third and one, and you're on their seven? All right. So, Mr. Boyd, we want to know, we know your stats. These are good stats. All right? I want to know, I want to know if I can get, oh, I don't know why I did that, 19.85. I want to know, what's the chance that, okay, what did I say we're at? Third and six? Okay. Third and six. So I want to see 6.1 yards. Okay, so I want to know if Mr. Boyd, on this particular play, what's the chance you get 6.1? Because 6.1 splits is a first down, yes? So, statistician, smart statistician is going to do this. They're going to call down to the field, hey, Coach Logan. However, they're going to identify Coach Logan. Put in, put in boy. This scenario, he has a 71.7% chance of getting 6.1 yards or more. So think about that. Now, I don't know if you all know this. Sports statistics. Data statistics started with the Oakland A's in baseball. Okay? It's called Powerball. Yeah. I mean, and so they knew, they knew. They said that their coach kind of had the statistics, had a team of statisticians. It's like, okay, if the humidity humidity is 38% and the temperature is 55 degrees, this might change my batting lineup. I might have a person that if there's no humidity at 80 degrees, it bats four. That person might bat seventh now. I might have a pitcher who pitches at a different situation. I have all kinds of data. There's all kinds of statistics. Now, is is our data here fabricated? Yeah, we were doing our parts, but lost of the same thing. You have sports statistics that'll go. If you're in a relay, you might be the first, second, third, or fourth swimmer, right? Now, when it was summer league, remember the orchestrated, organized drowning? I kid you not, it, once you all become parents, your kids decide to get into involved in a swim meet, you go to the neighborhood pool for the summer swim league. It's like, all right, four-year-olds and younger swim in the 25 free. It's orchestrated drowning is all it is. You're watching these kids, they're holding the line, they're crying. And you're like, okay, it's, it's now an hour and a half. Your kid still hasn't gotten to the other side. Um, but then, he, as it progresses, then you get better swimming. But, um, but if you have a true statistician coach, that coach is going to recognize, I'm going to put you in the first, second, third, or fourth part of the relay because of a certain characteristic that they know that you would have. And the other basic people would be linked to that for a certain order. Okay, Brian, quarterback. Okay, I'm gonna get you. We're getting you in the game because we're doing stats right now. Gotcha. Now I, I, I saw you put about a 48-yard bullet on that kid a couple weeks ago, to uh, ish, for him to go for a touchdown, right? I've seen your arm. You've got one X and arm. You put it in that region, that receiver should catch it, in my opinion. Like that's kind of the rule. Okay? So, my friend Brian, we're going to take a look at your normal distribution for being a quarterback. Let me clear this, go here, get rid of this. 
can't leave yet. We got to find out if Brian gets in the game, pal. <laughs> Brian. Oh, no. So I know 48, but you have some other good passes. I know you got a heck of an arm on you, young man. So let's say, let's say we were scouting you and we know that you, these are the numbers that, uh, that you're doing. Up. These are the yards of your flying ball. Got it? Okay. My friend. Uh oh. These are, I don't need these. Uh, I think this changed to X2. Okay. All right. So I have to change our data to X2. X2. Brian, if that true data that I just plugged in was accurate, that means you're averaging 26.8 yards per pass. Standard deviation of 14.3. That means 68% of the time you are going to throw the ball between 26.8 plus or minus 14.3 yards. That's pretty cool. All right. Brian, let me show you your normal distribution on this data. One. All right, my friend, this infinity in F I N I T Y. Brian, that is your normal distribution, okay, for your passing. Yes, we made up some data, but we're just acting like it. All right, so coach calls timeout, realizes Boyd's already given run like a truck, and he's a little tired right now, so we need that pass. All right. We are tomorrow, 29 hours from now. It's going into the third quarter, or going into the fourth quarter. We are sitting at second and 17 because Logan tackled one of the referees on the sideline. We got a penalty. Sorry, Logan, you're not supposed to do that, okay? <laughs> All right, second and 17. We, we want to make sure that this pass takes place. So, Brian, we want to know what the probability that you are going to throw a 49-yard or further pass to Ish. All right, my friend. Right now, in this case, it's a tough one. It's a must-have, but there is a 6% chance that you're going to throw that 49-yard bomb, okay? There is a chance that that could happen, okay? So that's where you're digging down deep. This is where you look over, and you're looking at Stirp, because I'm running your data, because I, I know I'm not coaching, but I'm running data. And I stir, but I got a chance. It's like, you got a chance. You got 6% chance. That's what you're going to do. And Logan's going to be like, why the hell is he talking to that math teacher over there? He's like, he's a, that coach that's our stat guy. Um, and he's running sports stat. Six percent. Okay. That means in that huddle, you're like, ish. Anywhere within a yard in front of your hand, it's got to be caught. Yeah, like, man, I got you. Okay? He goes, I'm going I'm to make Harvard proud of you. I'm going for UCLA, all right? Snap. And there's Ish, he's waving to the crowd, gives a thumbs up, gives Logan a high five as he passes him. Oh, come on. Gives you the high five as he passes Ocean. And all of a sudden, hot! 
turns and runs. You're in. Got it? <laughs> My friends, that, what we just did is true, real sports statistics. It is a real thing. It's something that is done. Now, friends, this could be done with music, which probably the, the next song that we hear is longer than three minutes and 45 seconds. We can figure that out. That's normal distribution. Okay? There is so much. There is so much that the statistics should go. Now, hey, friends, I'm sorry. I don't have homework planned for the weekend. Am I going to get any emails from parents that are angry? Yes. I'm not going to see y'all. Y'all on the defenses off the field saying, all right, here we got certain statistics we're working on. <laughs> Logan, I was trying to figure out how we were going to get your uh, your picks. Your picks? Because what do you how many, how many you got this season? Six? How many did you have last season? Oh shit, we can't do this. <laughs> not, not because you're bad, it's just I'm just trying to figure out the statistics. Okay. What's I bet you can do this. Um, okay. How many games you all played? How many games right now? Fourteen. This will be the fourteenth game? So it's gonna be thirteen games. Alright. Logan, I got something for you. We got you. I think I can do this. Um, you said six, and you've played 13 games. Agree? And this has a standard deviation. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with the standard deviation of 0. 0.5. All right, Logan. That is your normal distribution for picks. You have a six out of... You have six picks out of 13 games, okay? I realize you might have had multiple on a game, but it's just, just your average. You're averaging six out of 13 games. I'd say a 0.5 standard deviation. Logan, <laughs> you ready? <laughs> what? Oh, uh, Logan, you're going to like this. I'm going to go. What is the probability you have one or more picks tomorrow, my friend? Your probability you have one or more picks tomorrow, you're sitting at about 14% chance of one or more picks. Huge. <laughs> That's huge. Think of that. That again. You know, how big could how big could this kind of stuff go? I mean, some of y'all are going to college and playing ball at the next level or being competitive at the next level. I will assure you they were going to have data upon data upon data on each and every person that is playing. They're going to call plays because of that. You're going to have meets or competitions that you will be involved in because of who you are with statistics. <coughs> All right, Logan. 14%. Hey, hey, watch this up. No, no. All right, all right. Ready, ready. You're gonna like this. This this includes everybody. I did no. If 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 listen 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 listen. I'm gonna show the probability. Listen, ready. If Logan has two or more picks tomorrow, which there is a chance he has a 0.1 percent chance. If Logan has two or more picks tomorrow, he's done. We do the next quiz next week together as a class to make sure everyone has 100%. Oh, <laughs> no, only no one pressure. Only one pick. Pick. One, one pick. Two picks is kind of crazy. No, yeah, yeah, two picks is so That's a third of the only thing. Because they yeah. run the ball. So, one, 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 <laughs> one pick. And pick or scoop six? Because they just run the back all right, all right, all right. Tell you what, you, you'll be the ultimate one. If that happens, yeah. that's two, <coughs> two picks, 
No, 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 I'm not trying to put pressure on you, young man. Wow. <laughs> what do you say? Well, you don't want to know. Okay. That's it. That's the plan. What else is the plan? Oh, it is. 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 For force fumble and two force fumbles in there. Now that thing. And then Boyd pulling 6.7 yards or longer on a run. Brian putting up a 49 yarder. We got all kinds of statistics we just ran around with in this class today. And friends, I apologize if I did not deem your favorite sport, favorite activity. But if you come to me with some of your favorite activity, I'll make sure I incorporate it into Friday's next lesson next week. Yeah. Deal? <laughs> as long as your favorite activity is like, you know, dude, I can take the biggest vape hit ever. No, that's my favorite activity. Believe me. 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 We get to stop saying things. Well, that's what we did. We get to stop saying things. Bro, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. You're the best. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry about that. Cool. Brian, do you like that uh, statistics? It's kind of fun. <laughs> Maybe I start becoming a statistician for you guys' team. You know, all the rest of That stuff is fun. And you got to think about it. That kind of stuff might be a real. I know it's not. Hey guys, you good? You good? Six point one average yards, right? Six point one average Johnson. Two force fumbles. Two force fumbles. Three stars. So, and I'm not like that. 49-yarder. Yep. Oh, dude. I'd look forward to that. I'd be, you know you have the arm to do it. Do you? Yeah. 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 Yeah.